Hello! At the end of my last video I showed a prototype for a rasterized volumetric fork. I concluded that this system wouldn't work well due to floating point inaccuracies. I thought that would be it, but I got a few replies from people telling me that it looks really good and encouraging me to work around the problem. So just three days after publishing that video I already found a solution. The floating point inaccuracies came from this. My basic idea is that the back face adds as much fog as there would be if the entire path to the camera was filled in fog. Then the front face subtracts all the extra fog. By adding so much extra fog for the back face, the background color was lost when removing the front face fog. Well, turns out there's a way to add most of the fog directly with the front face. But I won't explain that now because I later changed it again. Well, you know how it goes. One problem fixed, two new problems appear. If I turn the fog strength way up, I actually manage to reach infinity quite quick, at which point it just stops working. Additionally, at the fog terrain boundary, I got the Z fighting issue. That was easy to fix though by doing less than comparisons for the Z buffer. Well, you know how it goes. One problem fixed, two new problems appear. I tested the fog outside the water and turns out that my transparency sorting was wrong. And then, for the first time, I decided to take a look at performance. 14 milliseconds for an empty screen. Turns out my post-processing shaders, most importantly Bloom, don't quite like the extra memory that comes with 32-bit floating point color buffers. Now, I did try to use a smaller buffer for post-processing, but as you can see, it was still at 7 milliseconds, which is better, but still terrible. So, my only option was to switch to 16-bit floating point. And well, I think you know how it goes at this point. More problems! With 16-bit floating point, it gets easier to reach infinity. The infinity problem wasn't too hard to solve, though. I just had to limit the values so it couldn't reach infinity. One solution would be to clamp the value after some distance, but I found a better way is to clamp the value either based on the distance to the terrain or the camera, whichever is closer. This makes the cut almost invisible. Then there is near plane clipping, which is super annoying. One possible solution for that is to use a reverse Z dev buffer, so I implemented that. I won't go into the details here because later we'll see that it doesn't work. And then I also found this. What am I even looking at? Moiré patterns from smooth shading without a texture? That doesn't make any sense. I was panicking at this point, thinking I may have triggered some sort of unresolvable driver bug. Just didn't make any sense to me. But it turns out that it was actually just caused by the sorting issue I mentioned earlier. It still doesn't make any sense to me why that would cause these patterns though. Well, after fixing my sorting order, I discovered that actually my level of detail borders weren't designed with transparency in mind. So after a few days of rethinking my meshing algorithm, Everything appeared to be working, finally. But performance wasn't great.
once again. Remember earlier when I fixed the near plane clipping? Well, turns out that in this particular case on my GPU or driver, greater than comparisons are some 9 milliseconds slower than less than comparisons. I also investigated a few alternatives, but ultimately I had to surrender here. After undoing that, the performance finally was good enough. Overall, the volumetric fog only costs about 3 to 4 milliseconds of frame time. And most of the performance difference comes from post-processing, which suffers the most from the higher memory bandwidth. And later, I was actually able to reclaim some 3 milliseconds from downscaling the Bloom implementation. So overall, I'd say it's practically free if you intended to use a 16-bit floating point buffer anyways. So is everything good now? Of course not, because I found this. This is just another floating point infinity issue caused by a short-range strong fog followed by a long-range weak fog. Together, their strengths would multiply to infinity. So I again had to rework my fog math completely. Now it basically works like this. Note that some of these operations are performed by the blending hardware, while the rest is done in the fragment shader. And honestly, I'm now at the point where I changed it so many times that I have no intuition for how this actually works, so don't expect any explanations from me. But the code looks nice and symmetrical at least. Additionally, this doesn't use the alpha value anymore, so if you have any idea what I can put in there, that would be great. So I still have one issue left, sadly. But the near plane clipping is only visible for like a single frame and I think that's good enough to reveal some fog in this video. I made a few demos and example biomes that I'd like to show you now. First of all, there is the regular water, which now has a nice fog effect. I was always a bit bothered by the missing fog in Minecraft. If you looked at water from above, you could see the entire ocean floor brightly and clearly. So I am happy that I found a way to solve this in Cubus. But there was so much more that can be done here. Look at this beautiful fog-covered forest, for example. This was inspired by how mountain terrain looks on a slightly cloudy day. Now, this is all static, of course, so moving clouds or similar would be pretty difficult and expensive. But, however, fog does not need to be white. The whole color spectrum is supported. And with that, you can make all sorts of crazy stuff. Now, sadly, the near plane clipping problem keeps appearing every time we transition to a different color. But apart from that, it's looking incredible. Apart from working on the fog, I also worked on some organization stuff. It should now be a lot easier to compile the game. You can basically just download the GitHub repository and execute the bash script on Linux or the batch script on Windows. This will then automatically download ZIG and compile and run the game. Now, on the first time, this is obviously a bit slower because it needs to download the compiler and it needs to compile all the dependencies once. But, as you can see, it took me less than two minutes to get the game running. I also decided to start using GitHub's issue system. And, as you can see, I got lots of issues. 
basically I just dump my ideas and the bugs I find there so I won't forget them. But this actually has a second advantage. If you are interested in helping me, then this gives you a good starting point. Anyways, this is all I have for you today. I know I <laughs> promised in my last video that this one would be about terrain generation, but well, I had to do the fog first, so see you in the next video, which will hopefully be about terrain generation. <laughs> Goodbye.